Hey everybody, it is a chilly one this morning and I'm off to the hospital to get a metal fragment taken out of my eye. <laughs> Last night I went to go to sleep and I was like, hang on a minute, why does my eye feel scratchy? And I thought I had nothing of it and then about an hour later I'm like, it's getting worse. I know this feeling and um, yeah, I've got a, a small metal fragment embedded in the front of my eye. And before you say it, I was wearing goggles the same as this happened about a year or two years ago. I can't remember exactly how long ago it was. I had goggles on. The problem is, if one of the millions of little fragments that you're creating with a die grinder or something like that ends up in, say, your hair or on your clothes, and it gets blown into your eye or, or falls out of your hair into your eye, and you just rub your eye, that's it. It's straight in. We're talking razor sharp little pieces of metal and an eyeball which is not particularly strong. So it, it they get stuck. It's no biggie. I've just got to go and have it taken out. It's I've had it done before, it's absolutely fine. It's annoying it's happened again, but then twice in two years is not too bad really. I know I know from the last time this happened, um, there's a lot of you have had to have this done so many times that you've lost count. Steamy and weird. Steamy, misty. It's just kind of annoying because I spent all of yesterday just trying to get everything I needed to get done done. So today I could get on with some more clocks because uh, I got some half done. And now I'm wasting my morning going to have a little tiny speck of metal taken out my eyeball. And uh, I can see perfectly fine. I am safe to ride. I think I've got enough fuel. It's a bit difficult to say. Divi's fuel indicator has been, it's been playing up for a while. It's been a little bit unpredictable. Like, I mean, I know leaving on the side stand, it will say it has more than it actually has. And when you stand it up, it takes a, a few moments for it to react and get back. But um, the other day it, it was stuck on empty. Um, and it started doing the mile counter, like saying, you know, three miles of over empty. And then all of a sudden, boom, it went back, back up to two or three bars. I don't think it's a float type indicator, although I suppose it might be, I don't know. Could be sticky, could need a clean. Oh yeah, huge thanks to everyone who's joined me over on Patreon. There's about 86 of you now, I think. I think it's something like that. Uh, thank you, the support is amazing. Hopefully it will lead to me doing better and better things in videos as I have more time to make them and not need to be trying to make stuff and getting pieces of metal in my eye. <laughs> as I say, this is not the first time, I doubt it will be the last. I can be as careful as I like. Statistically, one of them metal buggers is going to get in your, in your eyeball. I've probably got about 50 in my hands at the moment, but that's, you know, hands are fine. That's almost a pastime at this point, picking metal splinters out of my hands. Look, these are the bouncy people of England. They just bounce around a lot. We don't know why they do it. This will be my third visit in three years. Pigeon shit the first time, the metal fragment the second, and metal fragment the third. But if you consider how many millions of metal fragments I've probably made in the garage in the past year or so, um, it's not that big a deal, really. Yep. Yep, 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 yep. Motorcycles. No matter what I do, I always get an ear bashing off that clinic. It's not done yet, I've got to go back in about 40 odd minutes and they're going to quickly whip it out of my eye, which is fine. I don't have a problem with that at all. The thing that's kind of annoying though is this place changed from a walk-in centre to a uh, appointment only centre. And that's fine, but when you look at the guidelines it says it's appointment only unless it's an emergency, in which, ca in which case just come in and the nurse will assess you but ideally speak to your GP first. Well, I can't call my GP and get an appointment with him. You know, it's gonna take me two weeks to get a sodding appointment with them at least. So, called 111. Hello, usual shiz. Thing in I need you to tell them that I'm on my way. Just basically, you know, give them the heads up that gives me the permission to walk through the door. They've had that, but apparently they've never received it. And then she said, you know, you really do need to book an appointment before you come here. And I said, no, I, under I understand what you're saying, but your, your guidelines say it's, if it's an emergency, then you need to, um, need to come straight in. The bouncy people, 
These are the downwards bouncy people. They look very similar, but these ones go downwards. So I did everything the NHS told me. I looked on the website. Yes, foreign object in eye won't be washed out is in case of emergency. If you need to speak to someone about it, you know, call 111. So I call 111. Yes, that's fine. We'll refer you. You go there. They're like, now you need to make an appointment. I'm like, I've done everything the NHS has required me to do to come here by your own rules. And now you're telling me that I'm wrong for coming here. And I should have called you first. It doesn't say on your website, call for an appointment on the day. It says, get a doctor's appointment or receive 111. If it's an emergency, if it's not, well, then you've got a referral from your GP anyway. It's just silly, okay? I'm not complaining. It's fine. I'm going to have this thing out of my eye in an hour or so and I can get on with my day. Thank God for the NHS. What a wonderful thing. What it cost me thousands in other countries, I'm sure. Blah, blah, blah. Let's go and have a look down here. It looks all misty in the hills. Misty cows? It's taking a giant piss. Cow friends, I am not wearing the skin of your relatives on my hands. Don't look at my feet or torso or belt. <laughs> they don't care. See, it really does get colder once you start going up past the sort of midpoint of the South Downs. And you can see where the mist kind of starts over there. It's, it's the same place it starts getting cold, but so is the lay of the land. Over there is just a, there's a cold hole of spookiness. You okay, Dibby? <laughs> it's okay. I'm not going down there because I'll end up with a metal fragment in me tyre. <laughs> bye bye, cow friends. You're not very friendly though. I think they've been letting the field to eat all the crop tops, the bits that are left over from whatever crop they were growing. I ain't loving it. Hi! I've got time. Let's wander down to the edge and see if it's a better view when you don't have all the trees over you. I've got time to kill. As I say, I'm not criticising the NHS for this one, other than the fact that their system kind of tells you to do one thing and then the people tell you you shouldn't have done that, you should have done something else. It's like, well, I'm doing what the website and the people on the phone told me to do. What, what more do you want me to do? And they should understand that that's what people are doing. It's like, look, I'm not here to make your day harder. I try to do everything to make sure that we didn't have this this problem of, of um, appointment and an emergency and all this stuff. And I know you might think, well, it's not an emergency. It's not in the sense that I don't, you know, I'm not about to die. But it does need to be taken out because there is, there is the chances that it keeps digging deeper into your eye and eventually ends up inside your eye, as I understand it, or at least doing a lot more damage. And currently, it's right, it's actually in the vision part of my eye, the circle. I can't see it, but I'd rather not have permanent damage in the lens of my eye. When it was off to the side, you know, whatever, you, never, you don't look out there. I think the view's actually nicer from the top. Show me about the bushes. They ruin it. Ruin it! You know, it's been so long since I've been somewhere that's truly, truly quiet. I don't even remember what it's like. Because it just stood here. You, you, know, you know, it looks calm and serene, but... There's just this, this under-drone of car tyre noise. You know, it kind of sounds like a plane constantly flying over, or the, or the sea. I mean, it, you know, in ways it does actually sound like the sea at night when the stones are dragged down the beaches. But in sort of having that nice, nice rhythmical, you know, back and forth, it's just constant. <laughs> I've still got half an hour to kill, so I'm actually going to go and record another video in between making this video. Because I actually did have a subjected video to talk about, so I'm going to go and do that. But you won't know the difference, because you're just going to join me as I get back to the hospital. And then probably wait for an hour and have my eye looked. <laughs> Yay! I am free of metal bits in my eyes. They really had to dig that one out. You know, the last one they took out literally was like a two second job. It just popped out. Quick abrasion thing with the eye abrader. Take the surface and the rust off and... What was your uncle? I was out of there. But this time... 
it was causing a bit more problems. They managed to get it out quite quickly, but there was a lot of rust left over and a lot of crap in the hole, so we had to pick and pick and pick and pick and pick with a needle and, and you know, braid and a braid. So my eye currently looks like an Oompa Loompa has jizzed in it, but I can see perfectly fine, but that may get worse in a bit of time, so I'm gonna now get home. While we were sat waiting some drops and stuff to take effect, um, I was chatting with him, with the doctor, and he said, yeah, the best way to get the appointment is don't call any of the, you know, try and get an appointment through all the normal means or something like this, even though that's what the websites and everything tells you to do. He said, just call us directly, let us know what's going on, and we'll get you booked in. I, I doubt this will be the last time I ever have this done. If I can keep doing the work that I do, it will, ca it will happen <laughs> occasionally. I'm very careful to make sure that I'm grinding in directions away from me. I'm careful that I have my goggles on. I'm careful that I try and, you know, brush as much of the, the, the little chippings off of me as possible. But as I say, all it takes is for one. And th this thing, right, once you got it out, is about, I don't know, 0.5 millimetres long. A very, very, very small, thin little piece of metal. And honestly, because it's sticking in the surface of your eye and then when you close your I didn't know about this yesterday while I was uh, working because it was in the central part of my eye where, you know when I blink you just don't really notice it but when I try to go to sleep that's when it starts scratching the inside of your eyelid and you notice it immediately it isn't right really painful it's just really irritating but I don't know what more I can do you know short of like gluing old swimming <laughs> You know those swimming goggles with the foam edges gluing those over my eyeballs permanently so nothing could get into them. And I say all it takes is it for being in your hair or just stuck to your skin and then it happens to fall in your eye and by some luck, unluck, and then you rub your eye and that's it, it's embedded. I mean if you actually took a full blast of grinding bits off of a, an angle grinder or a die grinder into the eye, you're going to have several pieces of metal in your eye, not just one. So I'm pretty sure both times, well I had goggles on, it has to be, both times has been by just sheer bad luck. But as I was, I said to the doctor, I was like, I wonder how many tens of millions of metal fragments I have made in the past couple of years. The odds of keeping all of those out of my eyeballs is, um, it's, it's, it's not great, you know? And I had a quick look at my phone for a video when I last had this happen, uh, and it was September of 2017. So I managed to go over a year. Eyes are kind of amazing. I've just looked out my left eye, the, the bad one, on its own. And I can see everything perfectly. It's just a bit blurry. But when I use my other eye as well, I would not know there was something wrong with my left, left eye at all. It's very strange the way it corrects things. I should probably have an eye test, to be honest, because I haven't had an eye test. Well, they, they did, you know, they like read the line, read this line. I'm like, well, the, the, the second to bottom line is this. They never say like, oh, your eyes seem okay, they don't seem okay, you should have an eye test. They're always, well, I guess if I needed one, they'd suggest it. No, he said that, it's a bit difficult to gauge someone's eye abilities while they've currently got bits of metal stuck in them. Anyway, well, as I say, I'm going to go home, I'll probably chill out for the day, just let this calm down. It's annoying, because he, he's done ten times more damage to my eye than what that piece of metal was doing, but it had to go in and get rid of it. You have to, you have to abrade it, you have to get all the rust out. <laughs> He did check my other eye over as well, though. It was nicer. He said, I'll have a proper look around. And he's like, yeah, you've got nothing else going on in there. It's just, it's just that. Anyway, a bit of a random one, I know, but I'm not riding a huge amount at the moment because of, um, well, trying to do work in the garage. So rather than just doing another video going to Tesco's, I thought, well, we could do a video while we're out. Why not? Anyway, thank you for joining me. Thank you if you support me through any of the methods you can whether that be getting stickers or whatever, or joining the patron or whatever, or anything. Or even if that's just viewing the videos and liking them. I appreciate you all. Catch you next time. Hold on, I haven't experienced this one before. On the way home, I suddenly start tasting the, the taste of anti, um, not antiseptic, anaesthetic, or something like that. It really reminded me of the taste of, um, of when, I got, when I've had a couple of, you know, operations, you have a full general anaesthetic, you get a taste in your mouth before you actually pass out. Kind of tastes like that. But then my nose was kind of dripping, and I was like, oh, my, my nose is dripping. I'm thinking, you know, it's cold, it's just my nose dripping. What is dripping out of my nose is bright green, like, like luminous dye green. It's actually, I don't know if it's um, one of the, the uh, I don't know if it is actual dye, that he was using in my eye or whether it's 
I've got bright orange all around my eye and green coming out of my nose. I definitely now think that I have had an Oompa Loompa jizz in my face. If you enjoyed this video and the other content on the channel, please consider following the links in the description to show your support.